Dear colleagues, I'm Christoph Diener from the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Duisburg-Essen in Germany. Usually I'm reporting interesting scientific studies in the field of neurology, which were published in the last four weeks, but I have to admit June was lousy in terms of new science in neurology. And this month I take a different approach. I want to I want to tell you about a very interesting old drug. We are celebrating the 125th anniversary of aspirin. Aspirin was synthesized for the first time in Wuppertal, a city which is only 40 kilometers from my place, by Felix Hoffmann. Felix Hoffmann was searching for a new drug for his father, who suffered from severe joint pain, and the available drugs at that time had terrible adverse events. And this is why he worked on a new drug, which was later called aspirin acetyly salicylic acid. Now, initially, this drug was used very successfully until today for pain therapy for joint pain or arthritis, but it's also effective, as you know, in headaches, in particular tension type headache, and I think it's one of the most used drugs in the world for the treatment of acute migraine attacks. It's also available in some European countries in IV form for the treatment of severe migraine attacks or in the emergency room, and it's as effective as subcutaneous sumatriptan. By the way, it's also an effective migraine preventive drug in a dose of 300 milligrams daily. There was an interesting observation by a dentist in the 30s of the last century because he observed when he extracted teeth in people who took aspirin for joint pain that it was bleeding. And then he started to ask his patients about possible bleeding complications and vascular events. And in his area, he observed that people who took aspirin obviously didn't have coronary uh, myocardial infarctions. And it took a long time until people found out that aspirin is not only a pain medication, but also an antiplatelet agent. And the first randomized study which showed that aspirin is effective in secondary prevention after myocardial infarction was published in 1974 in the New England Journal of Medicine. In 1980, aspirin was approved by the FDA for the secondary prevention of stroke, and in 1985, for the secondary prevention after myocardial infarction. Now let's concentrate on the role of aspirin in the secondary prevention of TIA and ischemic stroke. Given early, it reduces the risk of a recurrent vascular event by 50% and long-term compared to placebo by 20%. Interestingly, the doses are different in different areas of the world. In the United States, it's either 81 milligrams or 325 milligrams. In Europe, it's uh, usually 100 milligrams. There is an interesting observation. Until a few years ago, there was no single trial which used 100 milligrams of aspirin compared to placebo for the secondary prevention of stroke. If we look at dual antiplatelet therapy, the combination for long-term prevention of aspirin and clopidogrel was not superior to aspirin alone or clopidogrel alone, but the combination of dipyridamol and aspirin and the combination of silostasol and aspirin was superior to aspirin alone for secondary stroke prevention. Short-term, within the first 30 days, the combination of aspirin and clopidogrel and the combination of ticagrelor and aspirin is superior to monotherapy, but also has an increased risk of bleeding. Now, people with atrial fibrillation or embolic strokes need to be anticoagulated, but the addition of aspirin to anticoagulation does not increase efficacy, it only increases the risk of bleeding. And then finally, in people above the age of 75 years, who have to take aspirin, there is an increased risk of upper GI bleeding, and these patients should, in addition, receive proton pump inhibitors. Now, what's about primary prevention of vascular events? This was promoted for almost 50 years all over the world, but in the last five years, there were a number of randomized trials which clearly showed aspirin is not effective compared to placebo in the primary prevention of vascular events, stroke, myocardial infarction, vascular death, it only increases the risk of bleeding. So it's a clear separation 
Aspirin should not be used for primary prevention of vascular events, but it should be used basically in everyone who doesn't have contraindications for secondary prevention of vascular events and vascular deaths. Ladies and gentlemen, a drug that is 125 years old is still one of the most used and affordable drugs all around the world. It's highly effective and it has only a small risk of major bleeding complications. It's really time to celebrate aspirin for this achievement. Dear colleagues, I'm Christoph Diener from the Medical Faculty of the University of Duisburg-Essen.